Welcome to Emerge Podcast 360. I'm your host, Miles O'Reilly. We want to thank you for tuning in. No matter where you are in this metaverse world, we're going to continue to bring you the best quality content and formula that we know how. We want to thank you guys for all the likes, shares, and subscriptions on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and now TikTok. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us on this lovely Wednesday night of this episode of Community Garden. And do we have another exciting guest, and we're reaching into this Mo House Community Garden, and we're pulling out... Another one of their roses and flowers. He's a graduate of Bastrop High in 18, 1989. He's a graduate of Grambling State University in the fall of 17 with a BA in business management. He's retired from the Army for 12 years and the Navy eight years. With over 20 years' experience, he is now the founding CEO of Northeast Counseling since 2015, where they provide mental and behavioral health counseling in addition to substance abuse. Mr. Keys is former president of the Gramlin State University alumni here in Bashkir. He's currently the vice president, proud father of Kari, Terrence, Kali, and Caden, and a proud member of Kappa, Alpha Psi, Return Incorporated. I give you none other than our own Mr. Terrence Key. How you doing today, brother? Yo, yo, yeah, doing great, man. Glad to be here. Honored to be here today, man. Well, we're so glad to have you, brother. We appreciate you stopping through to share with us, to kind of share with the people about your upbringing here in old Mohouse Parish. Oh, man, it's great, man. Uh, man, I learned my church family, my family, my village, um, all the people around, man. My, uh, just, it was a great experience, man, learning sports, uh, you know, meeting so many different people, growing up with so many different people, man. It's just a lifelong experience, a lifelong um, joy, man, I have in mind. I always laugh and Talk about old times, man. There was some really, really good old days here in Bachelor, Louisiana, man. And um, um, it's just it was a blessing, man. I'm grateful to be from this beautiful city, Strop City. Most definitely, most definitely. You know, who were kind of some of the people that you know you you looked up to and inspired you here from the community? Yeah, of course, man. My heroes are my mom, uh, my grandmother Lucille Key, uh, my fam- you know my, my my grandfather Walter Key. Of course, my mom and Jacqueline Key, man, and um, it extends out to my church family. You know, people like Coach um, Piggies, uh, Coach Hamlin, uh, Clarence Hawkins, uh, so many more, man, and so many other, so many ladies just inspired me. You know, when I was acting up in church back in the day, pinching me, getting blood out of me back then. You know, it's just a blessing, man. Everybody, man, the village itself, man. Um, so many people inspire me, man. I just that, that now it's a late day. I can't think of so many. So please don't don't blame it on my mind today. It's just everybody uh, that I grew up around was really a good experience, man. I love it. I love Baxter, man. Just so many different people, man. I I can't just name. I, there's so many more than what I who I named today. Right, right, right. You know, and, and you you spoke about you know um, the people that inspired you coming up in in Baxter. How do you see the community now? You being a retired uh, veteran from the Army and the Navy, let's speak about the war first. How, how do you feel about the politics and the countries particularly threatening to go to war now that you're retired? Well, I'm going to say, man, I'm not really a political person. I'm not really. I don't have the liberty to know a lot about politics. I try to not to stay away from it because there's so much going on, so much discourse, man. Um, so I really don't have the credibility of saying that I know what I, you know, what it is, but I can speak from my standpoint. War is no joke. Being in a wartime situation, I was on a ship, so I was pretty much secure for the most part. You know, I kind of, you know, the troops on the ground and things like that, people had more, uh, a lot more uh, riskier uh, um, experiences than I did, but it was scary. I did see a lot. However, man, um, um, you know, it's just, you know, not knowing if you're going to come back home on this side or whatever case may be. I just hope our leaders can get it together, you know, and, and, and find some other better solutions than war. Because I think still that even though after the war, um, it still doesn't really solve the issues, you know. So um, I'm just hoping they get it together, man. And I, I kind of stay away from politics because there's so much discourse going on, man. And, I, you know, I just try to stay away from it, try to stay 
on the positive side of everything. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I still, to this day, I was a recruiter. I, I got out of the military as a recruiter. Uh, that was my job. Um, and so with that being said, I always did a lot of career, um, career I gave career um, advice and stuff like that. Uh, uh, and so with that being said, I still, you know, if anybody asks me about the military and my experience, I'd like to share that with them just to give them some insight and give them the best advice I can. So it's just, you know, um, that's pretty much it on that. You know, you spoke about your, your, your grandparents um, being a strong foundation. We spoke earlier. And, and what do you see that's lacking um, with the youth in the community today speaking on foundation? What are you seeing now that you're home putting in the work? Well, I see a lot, man, that it's like family norms, man. I see a lot of kids doing, you know, what their parents are doing or what they did or they just live in the family norms. And, um, you know, basically, um, you know, uh, I, I mean, you know, sometimes we look at the kids. Sometimes we, I mean, and, and we can look at the parent as well. We kind of see some kind of, you know, when as far as in, what ties into mental health and things that they're going through. Um, you can see that, and and I always say that, uh, you know, if you're not a mental health professional, and you don't know how to diagnose yourself. So, in essence, I take up for the parent a lot of times because they don't know what to look for when you you know kids going through something or stressing. You know, um, they don't they don't really know how to. They just know something is not right. The kid is not able to identify when they are going through their struggles because they're not. You know, their mind their mind hasn't. You know, had the reasoning ability to be able to solve the problems when they know what's wrong. Kids don't know how to, most kids don't know how to uh, communicate, you know, the problem they're having. So basically with that being said, I just see his family norms. I see a lot of that. Um, and I think it's a lot we need to do in the community more um, to enhance, um, you know, our aware, awareness of mental and behavior health and substance abuse too. So there's so many other fields, you know, we need to do, but one thing I see is that, you know, when you, you know, there's a lot of events that we throw out here in Bastard, Louisiana, and when you offer those events, we don't see a lot, a lot of parent participation. That's one thing I see, you know. Uh, it's a lot of some resources out here that they are not, they don't know about. And <clears throat> I don't know, due to, you know, maybe work life or balancing that, it's kind of hard, you know, for them to be able to show up for everything. But I just think that, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of things that we can do, but we got to come together as a community. And not so much looking and rely on the government and things like that to um, make a difference here. Because like I always say, the best things we can do for life with kids are, are free most of the time. You know, we our time is more valuable than anything. You know, I hear that all the time with kids. It's not about money. It's not about this. not about that. It's just about, you know, the time. And that's what we have to do. Find more time. Because in our community back in Barrister back in the day, we had so many mentors, man, so many older guys that grabbed us, man, and and, and and it's hard on us and telling us what to do. So, you know, those are just a few things, you know, I see. Well, I know you're a big advocate for the youth um, here in, in the community. Um, what are some of the things? I know you're networking with various groups, and I, I see you always at some type of function networking. But let's look at this first. What are some of the things that you're seeing or not seeing through your networking throughout the city you know just supporting each other man it's, it's I, you know I, I find the lack of support even on my end and I don't worry about that but I see the lack of support from each little groups that we you know you deal with and you can go in like the mentoring programs for boys and girls if we you know if we have any I see the struggle like if they you know a person that's over that you know the, the finances they having trouble you know they want to do so much and they don't have the funding to do it but um, you know and they get frustrated and they kind of fall off, you know what I mean, or whatever the case may be, but you just got to stay in the fight. Uh, like I say, again, I think most things we do, are, you know, it's not, don't cost money, it's just time, you know, and uh, we, we just, we're not working together. It seems like a lot of other groups are out there, a lot of them that um, it's like maybe seem to be selfish gains sometimes, mm-hmm. and it's all about that instead of like really, you know, when I do things, I don't look at it from a selfish standpoint. I look at it, we're here to serve, and, and that's what I believe in it. You know, we're here to serve and, you know, and not to be served, you know. So um, with that being said, I just feel like we need to get together and be more supportive of each other and, and come together and um, just create more for this community. And um, it, it it doesn't take money all the time for that. Most definitely. 
we're going to take a short intermission. When we come back, you know that we know that you have Northeast Counseling, and, 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 and we want to know some of the pros and cons and some of the things you did or did not expect in being an entrepreneur. And then we're going to jump into sharing what you have seen with the mental health, especially here in Northeast Louisiana, when we come back after this intermission. We're still here. We got him in the building. Mr. Terrence Key, Northeast Counseling, LLC. When we return after this short intermission. Immerse 360 Podcast focuses on uplifting rural and urban areas and dire conditions with no solutions by shedding light on pioneers, athletes, and political figures who have made an impression on Northeast Louisiana and surrounding areas. Immerse understands the social and civic needs to love, learn, live, and laugh. So, tap in every Sunday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. on all social networks and platforms. Always remember, Immerse 360. Welcome back, welcome back. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Bershell Family Insurance Agency, Morehouse Community Development, and Bro Inc. Photography and Kick Thrones of Scrap City, Louisiana. We're still here with retired veteran from the Army and the Navy, now CEO and founder of Northeast Council LLC, Mr. Terrence Key. Mr. Key, before we went to intermission, uh, I was asking you about your networking and things that you're seeing here through your networking in the city. What is some of the things that you see mental-wise that's, 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 that's hindering our youth? Well, you know, first of all, I think it starts at home again, you know, like that family norms. Are. So basically, I think it starts with the parent. The parent basically don't know how to, uh, you know, being able to diagnose what's going on with the kid. And, you know, because we're not they're not trained professionals. At one point, um, I was, you know, a whole mess for myself personally. And I always tell people that with that being said, I didn't know until someone reached out to me and I started getting therapy myself. And this is one of the main reasons why I got into the, the field, because I, when I was struggling back in 2012, 2013, um, and didn't realize what I was going through, when my son told me, say, Dad, uh, something changed about you. And I knew right then I needed to get some help, you know, and I ignored it. And um, I, I just knew I didn't feel right. So I wasn't even able to like, diagnose what I'm going through, what I'm going through, because I wasn't a trained person. I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm just a business. I was a business major, so I wasn't no way in the field of, um, you know, mental health. So now I'm more aware. Um, more aware of what's going on, and you know, in other words, I can be able to. I've learned more, so I'm able to be able to uh, expel more to other people and be an example. So, with with, with that being said, you know, if if, the, if you know, we expect the child again to be able to get something we're not getting, to be able to figure it out. Kids are not able; they don't have the capacity to be able to uh, be able to articulate what they're going through. They just know they're not feeling right. And so if you're a parent and you don't know, you don't know, hey, I know something ain't right. But the thing is, again, that's when you start seeing patterns and start changing with the kids and you're seeing something, I think just seek some help, you know, no matter what it is, mental behavior health is a real big deal. I always tell people that mental health is um, just as important as physical health. So keep your mental health in check. You know, I do, you know. So um, it, it's just like, like family norms, man, and they don't, they, you know, the mom and parents are just trying to, go through the daily hustle and bustle, man, trying to make it. And, you know, they just say, hey, you know, they, they, they don't know how to identify when the kid is going through it. So if the child don't, if the parent don't know how to deal with it, how with the kid? That's why I always look at that, you know. Well, you, you look at you look at this, and I want to ask you this question. Do you think that the social media is, 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 is drawing the kid, kids in the wrong direction and that's causing some of these scratches and pressures that they're dealing with? Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, I just couldn't imagine having Facebook went out back in the day. You know what I mean? We had, it was so much simpler in life, man. They learn faster. The kids are learning faster at a faster age. I mean, almost toddler age. They learn way more than we learn. And so with that being said, um, they have a lot of stresses and pressures in life that we didn't have. Uh, and like I say, I know things don't always supposed to be the same. That just equates it like we just expect things to be like our grandfathers were when we were kids, when we were teenagers. And of course, time changes and things changes, technology changes. So um, with that being said, it's just life is just a uh, revolving, not a revolving, but more of a, it advances, especially social media. So yeah, it's a lot of, um, a lot of um, uh, social media is a big, but at the same time, I always look at your foundation. 
I always go back to the home because, you know, we're so quick to blame other things on, um, you know, on why the kids ain't the same no more, this and that. But they had to learn it from somewhere. Somewhere we dropped the ball. You know, I'm being honest. I, You know, we just can't say these generations because I see I look at a lot of behaviors, um, not judging, but uh, a lot of behaviors as adults my age or younger. And they display the same things, you know, that what they want their kids to do something they're not doing. And I always tell mine, everything I tell you, you see what I do. You see my grind. You see what I do. You know how my passion of giving back. So I always try to be the example, not, you know, not so much as in, not saying I've always been uh, successful at that, but I always try to be the example. That's what pushed me to push harder. You know, people ask me, what's my motivation? It's really, I want to be an example for them to be able to be better than me. And so, um, Again, I don't mean I always get it right, but, uh, you know, um, you know, kids have to learn from somewhere. And so we can't we it's so easy to say these kids are not the same. But at the same time, somewhere down the line, we dropped the ball. And I and I think we were talking earlier we was talking about, you know, you'd be able to tell the grandmothers back in the day versus the, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the, the, you know, even the fathers now, you know, and some, you know, some of us has still hasn't evolved. You know, when you listen, you go in some type of, you go in, in, into different places and you people you grow up with, they still talk the same. They still walk the same. They still, you know, it's all the same. You know, um, we, you know, when I see a lot of us, uh, our community, you know, we talk about sports. We talk about a lot of things. I'm not saying that's irrelevant, but we need to challenge, you know, you know, like if I go to a barbershop, uh, we, we talking about the Dallas Cowboys, the best, the Jordan was the best, and we talk about that. No, not me, we, but I'm listening. And it's just like no substance. We're not talking about any ideas and dreams. What we need to do to help the kids. Um, there's nothing wrong with sports, but at the same time, it should be, we should have more substance than just that. We should have a you know a more diverse conversations because we got work to do, and you know being so uh, you know drawn into that, and that's like that's the whole life. It's more than life than that. You know, we're here to serve and do more than just uh, satisfy our, you know, our gratification, what we want, what we want. We're supposed to be here to give back. And I do believe that. I, I'm just a firm believer of that. You know, you know, you like I said before, you've been doing a lot of networking and you're into the mental health. What are you finding out about your city, in particular Mohouse Parish, and what do you think some of the solutions that we possibly could come up with to kind of get us back to the pinnacle that we once were. Well, in the mental health and realm, um, um, in the mental health realm, and I think that we need to be more aware of it. We need to have more aware and, uh, awareness of, of, you know, mental health and mental behavior health, because I think it encompasses every adult and it encompasses every kid, every child at some point, whether it's on a depression level or whether it's, uh, you know, like a, um, uh, more of a sk- something they were born with, like a, a chemical imbalance in the brain, schizophrenic, um, bipolar. These are things that you were, you were born with, and sometimes it, it, it doesn't come around until like seventeen, eighteen, or early adult age. And um, we need to just be more aware of that. And also, I tell them all the time when I when I'm speaking in front of maybe people, I tell them like it's okay not to be okay, and you know we have to learn that. And even as men, we have to start putting that that macho thing up so much and say, Hey, look, I tell people all the time, look, Hey man, I'm not, it's, I'm, it's not a good day for me. You know, I tell my staff, Hey, look, I ain't the best. I don't take it out on me today. I'm just not in the best mood. There's nothing dealing with you, but it's just, you know, I'm just kind of maybe a little stressed or whatever the case may be. I'm, I'm okay to tell them that. And also, you know, we, that stigma in our community needs to be, uh, you know, needs, we need to do better in that because, I always tell people they crazy, they crazy. I hate people to say that word because some things they can't help, you know. And so, um, I just think that we need to be more awareness of starting, and then you know we need to get out there, and and that's what I try to do. I and every time I'm invited to something, I do my darnest to try to attend, you know, and answer any questions I could possibly do. And um, it's not all about when I attend. A lot of times I don't have to set a table up and solicit my business. I'm here to be example and you know other than just work you know i'm trying to solicit you know people to come to my agency i don't do that i, I do it just for because i love my city and uh we need more awareness of it. we need to support each other more in that you know uh so um that's that's the start to me on that did that answer what you're asking 
Right, right. And I, I know you spoke earlier about you were sharing with me about the transferring of energy when we all need someone to vent to, but you don't dump your problems off on people and people don't let people dump their problems off on you. You have to be able to decipher that and not allow that energy to jump into you. But kind of share with them, Mr. Key, about your analogy on that tr- transfer of energy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had a great experience, man. It, it, you know, it taught me a lot. I was maybe like three or four years ago, I was at an office and, and I had the parent was talking about her daughter and she was really, really concerned. And um, um, I had a call. I said, excuse me. They kept, whoever it was kept calling as a family member or somebody. They kept calling, you know, I was like, hey, excuse me. And I answered the phone. I said, hey, what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. I said, oh, man, whoa. And so they finished saying what they were saying. I hung up, right? And, you know, the lady was wiping her tears. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm back. And I was still, when she was talking to me, I was still, like, trying to process what that person was telling me, right? So I looked and I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm back now. And she just said, no, you're not. Say, excuse me, what you mean? She said, whoever that was on the other line transferred to you. You know, and so with that being said, that was a powerful lesson for me. The power of transferring, you know, people can have problems. You can be a listening ear, but at the same time, don't. It's the power of transfer is very powerful. And we cannot let, you know, people that transfers us, no matter who it is, mom, sister, brother, kid, whoever it is, you have to be able to learn to listen without letting it um because you know, you have, we have every, each individual have enough going on in the day, than to let other added stress on with someone that's going. That don't mean you don't you don't you're not not trying to help them with their problems or anything like that. But it's just for your mental ability, uh, you no, know, with your mental sanity, not letting it transfer to you to where it, it affects you because it does stress will affect, affect you, and um, you know that's what I say that that power of transferring and also, you know. Like, again, I always say seek mental health because I was at a point in my life to where I didn't think I needed it. And thank God, if had I not gotten it and still keep my maintenance now, I don't know where I would be. And with the grace of God, it, you know, it, you know, it, it, I'm still, I still struggle sometimes. And when I get that, I know, you know, my coping skill, how do I cope with this? What do I need to do when I'm worked up? You know, and then I be to be able to identify when my son is not going through what he's, when he's going through something. Hey, son, you want to talk about it? I don't press. You want to talk about it? And you know, I, I used to press, but now I don't because they're just going to withdraw because they don't. A lot of times they don't want to burden the parent, or they want to be strong, or they don't really know what to say because they don't know how to articulate what they're going through. Most definitely, and one thing I want to know from your qualitative perspective, especially with the Afro American community. Are you noticing that, especially us black males, that we try to bottle all this stuff in instead of finding someone to vent to or reach out and seek help? Absolutely. I was that guy. Again, I was that guy. And, man, I, I tell you, brother, I'm just so grateful for it. And um, and, and, and I'm going to say this, like depression. People, we just suffer from, a lot of people just suffer from that. Depression is not is something that doesn't last for a month or two. It's a 20, 30 year process. Sometimes you never get rid of it, you know, and sometimes in life, most of the people don't get rid of depression because it comes back from time to time. So, um, you know, um, we just don't know how to identify what we're going through. And that's what I mean by that. We just need to be the community need to be aware of the most important thing about mental health. And that's just without talking to somebody, learning strategies and skills, you know, it's just you, I tell people it's not going to fix itself. You know what I mean? It's not going to fix itself. So, you know, seek some help. Uh, um, but again, you know, I, I tell parents, you know, like if you just notice some a kid has, has withdrawn to, you know, fish. Fish for answers. You know, I mean, what's going on, son? You, you go, okay, you need to, you know, and let them know it's okay to talk to someone, you know. Because a lot of times the kids ain't going to talk to the parent. I tell the parent to leave out. If they'll tell me the, the parent and the mom, okay, I tell the parent to leave out, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I listen to them at, at, at both. I say, Mom, what would you like to happen, right? Mom will tell me what they like to happen. Then I tell the kid in front of the mom, ask the kid, what do you like to happen? I don't know. I don't know. And I ask mom to leave, and mom and dad will leave, right? And they just start, when they when they feel more comfortable to me and let them know, hey, I tell them, no, hey, this is no judgment zone, Right? They start letting their guards down, and then they start talking. 
And you can see real quick the pro- a lot of times what the main problem is. And, and, and you and it's, it's it's strange that you said that about kids feeling comfortable. What what is that trust factor like when when, when you're doing therapy? Are you finding a lot of distrust in the home inside the home between parent child? Yeah, I mean, I don't do therapy. I'm a, like I said again, I'm a business major, man. Right. I just child and you know what I've gone through in life and all the things that I've done in in this field to to help me understand better. Um, um, I can say that um, um, the the distrust is the child don't want they they don't know how to speak to the parent because one instance I remember I was talking to a, a lady and uh, she had a problem with her mom, a son and her daughter and every time they say something how they feel mom I mean she's hollering at them blah 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 blah, blah and they're just gonna shut down. You know, and you're not going to get nothing from them. Then I can't talk to her. She's not listening, you know. And so that 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 that's not helping the problem. But the mom, again, she may be a single parent, and she may be stressed and working, trying to two or three jobs and trying to make the ends meet, and you know, and that, that constant life struggle. So she's not, her, her mind is not, your word, immersed in understanding, you know, what's going on. Right, right. And I know you, we, we spoke earlier, and, and you have been, you know, he, matter of fact, y'all, he even gave me a counseling session up in here uh, <laughs> earlier before we started the, the podcast. But, you know, I know that you are seeing a lot of things throughout the community and throughout Northeast Louisiana. Just one thing that you see that you know is going to be a major problem down the pipeline. Well, I mean, man, I, I just I always stick to what I what I know. Okay, and I just say mental health, man, we got to do, we got to get it. We got to get that maintenance. We got to be able to reach out. We got to, as those are kids, we got to be able to say, we, we need to pay more attention, put down things uh, as parents, and get on their level, sit down at the table with them. Don't stand over them talking to them. Sit down with them. Break those barriers down. Let them know, hey, there's no judgment zone here. I'm listening to you. And that's what I had to do with my boys because I'm going to tell you, at one point I thought I feel like I lost them, you know, and I raised them. Most, a lot of the, most time in their life, uh, for the most part of their life, and um, they still come to me for advice. Sometimes they don't. However, um, I just keep the lines of communication open, let them know, son. Now I used to say, man, why in the heck did you do this? And then I don't say that no more. I said, well, man, what we need to do to fix it? How can daddy help? You know what I mean? It doesn't mean I'm banning them out every time, but, you know, I just, you know, just come from a no judgment zones most of the time. And, a lot of times I said, Dad, I know, I know what you're gonna say, you know. So it's just, it's just the um, the disconnect between the parent and the kid. Is that what we're talking about? Right. Yeah, between the parent and the kids, the disconnect there. And uh, we gotta, if you if you're talking out of frustration, I tell people communication one on one, adults or kids or your 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 spouse or whatever, um, we gotta stop talking to people in a frustrated, you know, in a frustrated tone because it comes across as. Um, it, it's not coming across in, in a positive. And I know me personally, if I'm getting a dialogue with someone, I'm going to shut down, you know, because I feel that, hey, we, we're adults, you know, let's 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 work this out. You know, how can we talk to each other in a respectful manner and a non um, uh, uh, aggressive tone? Does that make sense? Exactly. And not only that, you know, let's let's communicate because I don't do well in that in those environments. And I think we need to learn that skill. Because uh, it doesn't get us anywhere with the kids, our, our spouses, and the whole nine. Because, uh, you know, we should be able to have all, all the alternatives, ways, ways of a conversation should go like, hey, this, you know, such and such. You go to a person, a significant other, your kid, look, this is what I saw and this is what didn't make me feel well. You know, what, what you know, I'm, maybe I'm not, I'm not accusing, I'm just asking, this is how I thought, this is what it perceived to be with me. Now, I'm not saying you've done that. All right. And and so with that being said, uh, the, you know, like, well, look, give me give them opportunity to explain themselves, because what you a lot of times you see, it may not be what it is. Right. So when you do that, um, you know, give them time to say what they need to say. So, you know, eat, you know, and you're hoping that, you know, it, it'll go out like, well, OK, look, I'll be aware of that next time. I try not to let that happen again. That should be it. But going on and on about it, and we're not getting anywhere because you're finna talk. You want your point across, and you're not getting anywhere. You know, I got to get my last word, you, but I'm not hearing you. You know, and some people listen to 
respond and not to understand. Wow. Did y'all hear that? Say that again, Mr. Key. You know, some people listen to respond and not to understand. And, and you know what? You've been such a blessing to us, man. And like I say, um, I, I look up to you and Brother Brooks. You guys um, jumped out there in that water, not really knowing nothing about mental health, but both of you guys went through some things in your life, and God put you on a path for you guys to open up mental health through uh, agencies throughout Northeast Louisiana. And when we come back from the intermission, before we let you go, just give us a few pros and cons to things that you experienced and you're witnessing, um, the ups and the downs of being not only a business owner, but a black business owner in such a rural area like Scrap City. When we return, we're still here with CEO and founder of Northeast Council LLC when we return after this intermission. Welcome back, welcome back. This portion of the show is being brought to you by 44 Million E-E-N-T, Brass Section of Facebook, Stardom Networks and Club Planet, Funksville, and Miss Aquisa Gibbons of Carthage, Texas with Above Average Healthcare. We're still here with our own Mr. Terrence Key, founder and CEO of Northeast Counseling, LLC. Before we let you go, Mr. Key, we want to know your last and final thoughts but give us some of the cons and the pros, the ups and the downs of being a business owner and an entrepreneur in a rural area. Yeah, man. It's first of all, I just want to say thank you, man, for for inviting me here, man. It's been it's an honor and pleasure being here, being able to, uh, you know, be in front of. I've never thought I'd be. I'm not a public speaker. Never thought I'd be on here talking because I'm. I don't really like to talk a lot. <laughs> so, uh, just really thank you, and I'm very uh, blessed to be here, man, and being, you know, hopefully to be able to inspire someone to. Uh, help someone out, gave some type of advice to be able to help them. Um, so basically, the pros and and you know being ownership man is I I I say that I always tell people I'm living my dream. I'm living my dream because I feel like I'm doing God's work. It's not about no money or anything material. It's so much as in I'm being able to do what I love to do, and I would do it free. Um, and I have done it free for for a long time. This type of somewhat in this area of mental health and behavior help and and helping you. Um, and the pros of it is, man, it's just that the satisfaction of being able to, uh, a client come up to you or, you know, someone say, Mr. Keith, thank you. You know, that, that's to me, that's, that's, uh, you know, um, that's rewarding to me, that pros of that. And also being able to see my staff, making them smile. You know, I try to always believe I, well, you know, when they do anything for me, I always say, thank you. I always do things to remind myself, thank you. And, and letting them know. And I hope they know that, you know, I, I appreciate them because nobody has to do anything for me and anything anybody do for me. So I truly I am 100 percent grateful. So that's the pro, that's the pros to me. Seeing people smile, man, and being able to try to make a difference. If I reach one or two, I feel like I've done my job. And I just feel like I'm here for the long run, man. And as long as God keep me here, man, I want to do much more as I can. I don't have all the answers. I just stay in my lane in my mental health field and any kind of way I can reach out in the other realms. I'll be able, you know, be able to help. Um, I always tell people, man, I'm here not just to solicit my business because a lot of times I do go to places where I'm just being trying to be show up for support or me, um, you know, and, and, and I, it doesn't always have to be anything in it for me. Most of the time, I just don't like that. Um, I do. I do a lot, you know, for the community. I just don't advertise it, you know, because I just feel like my blessing don't have to go out and. Oh, I did. This, I do this for these people. I do that. I do a lot. I have a. A sober home for men, I mean, for uh, addicts that I've had since 2017, 2018. Yeah, 2018, August 2018. And um, basically, we provide housing for them and I try to help them get employment and stuff like that. Because a lot of times they get out of the facilities and things or incarcerated or whatever, and they don't have anywhere to go. Um, and they don't have family. They have family, but they can't go back in their environment. So I do so much more. That's my ministry. Um, it's not like no, it doesn't make money or anything like that. Yeah, you know, I've been screwed a lot over by them. You know what I mean? I still some tell, sometimes it tells me, man, 
you know, get don't forget that, you know. But God keeps telling, no, nah, man, you here. I got you here for a reason. And uh, when they tell me, you know, when, when they come in, they tell me how much they appreciate me, how much I've helped change their lives. That's my pro, you know. That's my pros and cons, man. It's just basically, um, um, you know, when you sometimes you give people and your business your all and it's not reciprocated, you know, uh, you know, the, you know, the loyalty, the level of loyalty is not the same. But you give, you feel you, you don't get it back. That's why I feel sometimes all um, the managing people that, you know, that expect and not really doing with their part. Oh, I, I tell my staff all the time, you know, I'm not asking you to do nothing. We ain't got to be friends. We ain't got to do nothing. I'm going to ask you just to do A, B, and C. This is your job. Just one-on-one, you know. And um, the, it's the problems being, you know, not only that, you know, when the cutbacks, one thing I'm having my problems with the cons, uh, one thing is struggling now with, you know, with the, the state. You know, you're constantly fighting with them, the changes. And um, you constantly have to say, man, you know, it's it's just discouraging sometimes, but, God I always throw a ram in the bush, man. I, I, but I got this here for you. This they cut this out, but you got that. And he always tell me, he let me know, no, nah, you ain't gonna quit, you know. And um, just the challenges of dealing, you know, with sometimes with, you know, the workers, and sometimes feeling like you know your, your own community won't support you. But uh, you know, I keep pushing, and I'm not everything I do. I don't do it for to get something out of it. So when I feel like that. You know, I just keep on pushing, you know, when I get discouraged and I just say, look, it's not about them. It's about what I'm supposed to do. You know, and, and, and you said that and that's what we titled um, the episode of this podcast, this this segment of uh, Community Garden about you. Seeing it through and staying true. Absolutely. And, and, and I see you doing that. And, and brother, I just want to tell you, like, once again, I'm proud of I look up to you guys. Uh, you guys inspired me um, to be an entrepreneur and, 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 and do it myself and do it my way. And, and I appreciate you for that. And before we let you go, final thought, shout out to your city, Scrap City. Yeah, shout out to my city, man. I love you guys. I'm here to stay long term. Um, and anything I can do to reach out to any other you know, entities, uh, whatever case may be, I'm here. I'm, just, I'm a phone call away or just come visit, whatever case may be. And Maybe we can talk about what we do and how we can merge and get together and make this community a better place. And I just want to say, man, you keep your head up. Thank you for what you do, man, because you're reaching out to a lot of people in a different perspective. Um, you know, I know it gets hard sometimes, not a lot of support, brother, but just keep on pushing, man. You know, I always just say, get hit it, get it, and come back with it. You know, that's my uncle say. And, you know, man, you just got to keep staying grinding, man, and don't, don't give up on this, man, because it's a really, really good thing. And I want to basically uh, just let me know about advertising. I want to maybe you should give a shout out to me as well. Support you by advertising. And um, I'm just honored to be here, man. This is you blessed me tonight. Just being in your presence and being able to, you know, in, enjoy your platform. Right, bro. We appreciate you, man. And we are so grateful that you came through and you shared a lot of light on, on me. And like I said, he didn't counsel me tonight and gave me some good therapy and, and put me back on track because when we, before we got started, this all gone internet wouldn't hook up and he seen me in a meltdown and then brother brought me back to the other side. We want to thank Mr. Terrence Key for joining us on this episode of Community Garden. We want to thank you guys for tuning in. This has been brought to you by Brass Section, Stardom Networks and Club Planet Funks of Facebook. We want to thank 44 Million ENT, Mohouse Community Development, and your own Involved Social and Civic Club, where we understand the social and civic needs of love, learn, live, and laugh, and take next time. Y'all get involved. Y'all yes. be encouraged. And most of all, y'all stay immersed. We out of this thing. I already know it's the hustle, baby. Baby girl. Look at that money in that bag right there and count it for you, boy. You did. Let me go in here and jump in this shower. And when I get out, well, you know what we about. Yeah. yeah. Red bottom on her feet. Michael Cole's back. Man. Louis Gucci store bag. Still will get it. Your ass. She walk like a supermodel chick. She ain't got a brand. She let the money talk for she be hanging with the cash. Yeah. Catch her off in Lenny. She know Popeye. She got finished. More where dick came from. She spin it like it.